Okay, so thank you for the invitation. So um, as uh, you have said, I, I work on the question of functional cure and edit controllers. So I will give you some information we can have right now about these rare patients. So we'll insert the rest. And uh, when we speak about HIV cure, we can, we can see two kinds of, of point of view. The first one on the, on the left is uh, it's called eradication. You destroy all HIV uh, genomes and the, the patient is cleared without any infection. The second one is functional cure. This means that, as you know, the patient is still HIV infected but is able to uh, withdraw antiretroviral therapy and can live without taking drugs. So, next one um, about HIV eradication. We know that it is possible because um, uh, we, we know. Uh, the Berlin patient. We know probably also other patients, such as one published in in Great Britain. The question for this patient is that they unfortunately had leukemias or hematologic malignancies, and they had to survive after bone marrow transplant. So, okay, this phenotype exists, but it's very rare, and we cannot apply it, of course, for the other. So, the question of remission now. Is it a myth or reality? And we know that, in fact, it is possible, next slide, because we have patients named elite controllers, HIV controllers, who are, can be considered as a model of successful remission, as I will show you. As you can see on this uh, graph, um, I, com I continue to follow this patient. This woman has been known infected by HIV in 1990, and um, 30 years after, she is always fully controlling the virus. We defined uh, some years ago um, spontaneous HIV controllers as uh, HIV infected for more than 10 years, more than 90% of the renovial loads below 400 and copies and never treated. More recently, with SCS SCIN, we define post treatment controllers. This means patients treated by ART in primary infection who were able to stop ART and keep the virus control. Next. So, as you know, we can identify different parameters associated with natural control of HIV, the presence of a defective virus, uh, the reduced genetic susceptibility to HIV, the immune response, and also the question of inoculum. To test the hypothesis, we performed a, a study with uh, the French uh, HIV agency, the NRS. Uh, it starts in 2005, still ongoing, and we have today gathered more than 350 uh, HIV controllers in, in the codex cohort. Next, about the, vir about the virus, something is, is, is rather clear. The largest number of patients is infected with replication competent, competent HIV. So a defective virus do not explain, does not explain, sorry, the phenotypes. Second important point is that the HIV reservoir is very small in uh, both spontaneous HIV controllers and post-treatment controllers. Next, as you can see on the next slide here in green on the right panel, you have the very low uh, amounts of HIV DNA in PBMCs in um, the HIV controller cohort and Visconti group. We contrast with all the other groups of patients. And this suggests that to have a very small HIV reservoir is a common denominator, which is mandatory to be able to control the virus. Next. Um, the, the quality of the HIV reservoir is also very important. We published some years ago that um, the mobilization of the HIV reservoir in elite controllers was very difficult and uh, heterogeneous, heterogeneous according to the LRA, the, the latency uh, reversing agent we used. And in fact, per se, the size of the reservoir is probably a major factor to limit the ability of HIV reactivation. And uh, uh, as you have seen, there is a very nice paper published last year uh, identifying some qualitative properties of the viral reservoirs in elite controllers. And um, this is today, I think, a very important field of interest. And we, we actively study this, this part of the, of the puzzle. Next. If we move now to the immune responses, next. We had results published some years ago by the group of uh, Gianfranco Pancino and Asia Sayon at Pasteur, showing that uh, HIV controllers have a unique properties um, to block viral, viral application with their CD8 T cells. Uh, in blue on the graph, you have CD4 T cells alone. They can produce HIV, but if you 
four cultures, the CD4 T cells and the CD8 T cells with the anti cycles. You can see the, on the left panel that only in, in HIV controller, you have a block, significant block of HIV production. So this means that if we want to translate the phenotype of edit controllers to other patients, it seems very important to, to get functional HIV specific CD8 T cell response. Uh, it's probably one of the major actors we, we want to, to develop. Next. Um, other properties, the HIV specific CD8 T cell response is polyfunctional in controllers, and this is not restricted by HLA phenotype. Next one. A very important point published by the group of Barbara Chaclet at San Francisco was this paper published um, 10 years ago showing that in elite controllers, you can find a strong HIV specific. Uh, CD8 T cell response in tissues in the rectum, and uh, that contrasts with um, patients on art. So these patients have a good CD8 T cell response, in blood, but also in tissues, and uh, tissues have been rarely studied in elite controllers. And next slide. You have a recent paper published in, uh, in Science Translational Medicine showing that uh, um, studying lymph nodes in elite controllers, paper published with Michael Betts, and uh, they showed that you have a low size of the HIV reservoir in lymph nodes, in controllers. You have the high suppressive capacity of the T cells on the right panel. But if you look at more deeply the, the, the phenotypes of the CD8 T cells, surprisingly, you find few cytotoxic CD8 T cells in lymph nodes. Next. And the, 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 the clue was that, was that in the controllers, it seems to exist a specific phenotype of CDT cells in tissues uh, favoring um, transcriptomic and, uh, signatures about homeostasia, about migration of CDT cells in tissues, contrasting with the exhaustion signature seen in patients on art. This is very interesting because um, this means that to study tissues um, in elite controllers is probably um, giving more information. Next, as you have seen, the um, next slide, okay. Next one is the recent paper published by uh, Assier and Mathieu Angin, um, looking at a completely different uh, point of view, which is the, the metabolism. You know that uh, um, metabolism and uh, immunity is now a very interesting field. Many works about that. And uh, Assier was able to, to show that the central memory CDT set from elite controllers are able to work using two resources. They can work with glucose, but also if there is no glucose in the, in the medium, they can work with fatty acids oxidation. And this contrasted with uh, the results observed in, uh, in patients on art, showing that perhaps if we can modify the metabolisms of CD8 T cells from patients on art, perhaps we can recover the function of the CD8 T cells from elite controllers. And ASIA has very nice results about that, which uh, will be submitted uh, uh, for the IAS on uh, Ducroy. Next. Uh, if you follow carefully, a major actor should be present. Okay, next slide. Uh, of course, if CD8 T cells work, this means that edit controllers have fully functional HIV specific CD4 T cells. And this has been uh, reported by Lisa Chakrabarty at Pasteur, showing that uh, these uh, patients have um, very specific TCR with which is called public TCR, conferring higher avidity uh, for the, the CD4 T cell responses. And she was able to transfer the properties of this TCR to allogenic uh, cells, CD4 and CD8 T cells. And this is a, a, a door open to um, a cellular therapies such as CAR T cells, which could be very interesting uh, to transfer the properties of these um, of the controller's T cells to other patients. Next. So this is a proposal for functional cure model. Uh, we published uh, that in elite controllers, there are restriction factors involved in, in primary infection, which are able to limit the dissemination of the virus and the size of the reservoirs. This can help the development of a strong immunity, T cell predominantly, uh, CD4 and CD8 T cell immunity uh, in blood and in tissues, leading to long-term control. Uh, this can lead to a very, a very small HIV reservoir, and, and the immune system can maintain the, the control of the, of the reservoir. In post-treatment controllers, the mechanisms are probably different. You have the impact of the early art very soon, and then probably a role of NK cells 
with a, a paper which is, had been submitted uh, uh, last week by ASCR showing a very impact role, a very important role of the MK cells for post recon controls. Next one. So to get the trivial emission is it achievable? The answer is probably yes, but what do we need? And the question is how are cherry controllers can help about that? We, we know that we need a small HIV reservoir. So this means a better knowledge of the mechanisms of HIV persistence. We need to, to counteract the mechanisms uh, covering the reservoir with a favorable risk reward ratio. And we need to do that in a large number of patients and at, with an acceptable cost. Next. So the problem of the reservoir uh, is that we, we have different parameters. The first point, if we want to get an HIV remission is to act on, inter on, on the reservoir cells, this means uninterrogated HIV in blood, in C40 cells, but also in tissues, and this is uh, the, the little circle on the bottom with some macrophages and some C40 cells living in their tissues. We need to do that. The second point is to try to improve immunity, to, to, to gain access to the kind of immune status of controllers. And the third part, but it's not the topic today, is to discuss about antiretroviral therapies and the question of diffusion of Antiretroviral drugs and tissues. Next. How to, to, to act on HIV reservoir and reduce its size? Uh, there are different um, pathways we can, we can follow. We can try to block CCR5 with a parallel with the Berlin patient. Uh, there are the first paper in 2014. There is a huge effort today to try to, to delay CCR5. There are all the strategies aiming uh, at reducing the size of the reservoir with shock and kill strategies, but clearly the results obtained today are a bit disappointing with this strategy. There are also strategies trying to freeze the virus. The third one is to modify the metabolism and the differentiation of the targets, which you have C4T cells, and uh, we think that it is feasible, and there are some drugs which could modify the, the, the metabolism of, of T cells to, to let them less susceptible to HIV. And also, of course, a, a better understanding of the mechanisms of HIV latency in, in, in elite controllers. Next. In green, it is, um, I, 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 wrote, I wrote in green, the things we, we, can, we, can, we can draw parallel with controllers. The tissue reservoir are a major problem. They are numerous, they are hard to study. Um, too often, um, researchers focus only on blood. And uh, we know that some antiretroviral drugs can have insufficient diffusions in, in some tissues. And uh, this underlines the, the importance to study uh, the persistence of HIV in tissues and in elite controllers. Next. So how we, we can improve HIV specific immune response? Uh, there are two possibilities. On the left panel, we can try to manipulate the immune system ex vivo. Um, and is it possible in elite controllers? Is it possible thanks to elite controllers? The answer is yes. It is all the question of metabolic reprogramming we are currently working on with ACR with different drugs to modify the metabolism, the metabolism of CD4 or CD T cells. Is it possible to induce um, genetic modification, such as some CAR T cells, um, CCR5 down, down, down regulation? It is something which is probably possible, more expensive, more difficult to, to, to set up, but it's, it's possible. And on the right panel, it's about in vivo modulation of the immune system. Next one. And uh, we know today that IL-15, for example, is very interesting. It can, uh, in ex vivo, uh, modify the, the, the functions of CD T cells from patients on art to, to, to lead them to, to, to become uh, CD T cells like those of controllers. Metabolic programming again. The question we know today that BNABs are major for cure strategies. Interestingly, in elite controllers, a uh, long time ago, we published that uh, they had some uh, neutralizing antibodies uh, having also ADCC activities. So uh, the, the window of BNEBS is, is probably uh, interesting to continue to, 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 to look at. Uh, modulation of chronic inflammation, we could speak about that, but in some elite controllers, they don't have any uh, evidence of chronic inflammation, uh, suggesting that the reduction of chronic inflammation is probably mandatory to help functional cure strategies. Next. In conclusion, I, I would say that actually controls are models of what we want to get. We have to focus on tissues. It's, uh, really believe that. 
Um, there are different ways to, to, to study tissues. What about a, a cure eradication? Clearly, I don't believe in it. What about the functional cure? I think it is, it is feasible, but it will take a long time again. Uh, and we have, I think, I, I do think that we have to work together with the HIV community and also with other communities uh, such as oncology, uh, metabolism, because we can learn many things from these uh, guys and these uh, research teams, and we can translate some knowledge and some uh, skills from uh, these fields to the HIV field. I think it's the end. Next one, probably the acknowledgements. Okay, I think the, the last one is finished. Yes, and, that, and that's it. Next one.